Hello everybody, it's Dr. Stuart A. Swerdlow and Janet Diane Moya Swerdlow and this is the Expansions News Podcast for the third week of October 2018 and boy it's sure cold and icy out there today. Then how come you're still wearing short sleeves? Because inside I'm hot. Psst. Yes. Aren't you lucky to be with me? Answer? Yes, I am. I'm so happy to be with you, hot, hot, hot man. Okay. Is that being sexist? I don't care. You know that I'm not politically correct, and I never will be. On to the news. And most of you, I hopefully, hopefully all of you, will get the uh, podcast links, and you will be able to see the footage that shows the Honduran caravan of migrants being paid cash as they march across or to the U.S. border. So is that correct to call them migrants then? Well, it's almost like a little army. What else do I call them? A Hoodlums or army. Paid, yeah. uh, immig paid immigrants. No, paid army. It's like a little civilian yeah. army so, they've gathered. So get this. They're mostly from Honduras, but not all. But Guatemala's president announced in the country's largest newspaper that nearly 100 ISIS terrorists have been apprehended in that Central American country. And that's who's coming towards the border. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's not forget that Guatemala is one of the countries that bombarded the U.S. with illegal immigrant miners under Barack Obama's open border free-for-all. Thank you, B.O. That's a perfect initials for him. So, a terrorist could have easily slipped in considering that the miners, who are coined unaccompanied alien children. <coughs> they're alien children. And they're called, that's called UAC. Oh, so it's an official name? Yeah, unaccompanied alien children who are not properly vetted and some turned out to be violent, they call it gang bangers, which could have another meaning, who went on to commit heinous crimes in their adopted land, uh, a.k.a. USA. Uh, in fact, the nation's most violent street gang, Mara Salvatrucha, which we know as MS-13, was uh, energized by the barrage of UACs. And in Texas especially, it's a problem. There are more than 60,000 UACs with criminal histories. These are all children. Children. In other words, they have found like 27-year-olds with a passport that said they're 15 mm -hmm. or 12. Gotcha. Fake. And let me explain. Guatemala. And by the way, we were in Guatemala, mm -hmm. and it was just scary, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Guatemala has long been known as a major smuggling corridor for foreigners from African and Asian countries making their way to the U.S. Last year, Guatemala's largest newspaper, Prensa Libra, which means free press, which doesn't exist, free press, published an in-depth piece on the inner workings of an international human smuggling network that takes immigrants from Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Nepal, and Bangladesh to the U.S. First, they're sent to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, then flown to Brazil, then to Colombia, and then they're transported to Panama and moved to Costa Rica, and then to Guatemala. Who can afford to do that? I'll give you okay. the initials. G.S. George Soros. Is that like M.S. on there? Listen. Uh, the Spanish news reports Guatemala as a human smuggling paradise because it's so easy to get fake passports. Maybe I should go there. So <laughs> that's who's coming here or trying to. Mexico has asked the United Nations for assistance with the migrant caravan. Oh, that's like asking the fox to help with the hen house. 
And this uh, caravan has grown to 4,000 people, mostly from Honduras. Mexican officials were desperately trying to block the migrants after President Trump threatened to cancel his proposed U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade deal as a punishment if they don't patrol the southern border. But guess what? What? They let them through. Listen to me. How many miles is it from Honduras up to the U.S.? Well, even though they've gotten through Honduras to Guatemala to Mexico, it's a very, very long trip from the southern border of Mexico to the northern. Plus, they have to go through Chiapas, uh, terrorist areas, uh, Central Mexico terrorists, the, the Zona de Silencia, the huge Chihuahuan uh, Desert. Remember the mm -hmm. Chihuahuan Desert? We were mm -hmm. there last year. They're not going to make it. But I'm saying, how many miles just from A Honduras lot. to how far? How it's about 2,500 kilometers which would be up over a thousand miles. But yeah. listen to me, it's filled with women and children well, as well. Well, so that's and even for men, a thousand miles or twenty five hundred kilometers, that's a long ways to walk. Well, well, here's the interesting. Here's it doesn't the make sense. Well, listen, it's stupid. It's it's a show. Mexico is seeking the UN to help create a processing center to evaluate the migrants and identify. Which ones should be qualified as refugees worthy of protection and which ones are illegal? So, listen, if they left their countries without passports and visas, they are illegal. You don't need the freaking UN to lie about everything. And here's the better, even better. Immigrant rights activists have said the people must be treated as refugees deserving of protections entitled to enter the U.S. and make claims of asylum. No, there's no war in their country. There is no problem in their country except maybe poverty. There's poverty in the United States. There are Americans who are in poverty. They're not seeking asylum elsewhere. Stay the frick home. Was that clear enough? Of that? Was that politically incorrect enough? Good. Now, of the tens of thousands of illegal immigrant children and families which have been caught jumping the U.S. border in 2017, more than 98% remain in the country. Why? So they're deporting people who have been here for like 40, 50 freaking years, and these immigrants are like, okay, you can stay. Yeah. What is wrong with that picture? Yeah, but I want to also add that I saw those pictures. And, you know, what they did was they took these children and they were trying to force them at first. And the little kids were frightened. They're crying. First of all, those aren't even their parents. Well, well, then that's what I'm telling you, that these little kids, they look like maybe seven, eight years old. Their, their parents are trying to force them or whoever it is that's got them. And these kids are crying and they don't want to do this. And, you know, they've got babies and, they, and all these immigrants, whatever they are, they've got backpacks and they don't look like they just walked a thousand miles. Yeah, because they didn't. That's how they Somebody get there. Somebody should take old, decrepit, evil George Soros and throw him in the Mexican desert and let go walk to the border, old evil man. But I'm telling you, how in the world did they walk that far? People don't. And those little kids and those babies, you know, nobody looks dehydrated, nobody looks sick, nobody looks like they were suffering from food or de emaciated nothing so something else is going on they didn't of course just get and, then the, and then they have a picture of, of a man holding a baby <gasps> like this, this what why why is he doing that he's in a, in a group of people and they have everything they need yeah they do have everything and today i saw like oh they're at the mexican border stranded in the heat and they're so hungry that go home who told you to come there? No, whoever paid them to come. Yeah, they got paid to do that mm -hmm. and, and, and paid to make faces at the, at the camera. And, and put their children in front. Which are not their children. They are children that have been taken from families and given to other people to make them look like their families. It's a big scam. It's a terrible thing. And thank God President Trump will not allow them across the border. The border will be closed, and it should be, and those people should never make it past where they are right now. They should be sent home. I'll get on to, to more of this because many of them aren't even Mexican or Central American. Many of them are from Asia. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, you hear that noise? There's ice and snow falling at this moment mm -hmm. Octo in the in third week of October. Yeah, that's global warming in Michigan, snow and ice and high wind. Yeah, with a warning to for for um, for. Uh, 
travel danger, travel advisor, travel advisor in, in the heavy snow and, and ice that comes down in October. Yeah. And they say, oh, it's going to be a warm winter. No, Where? So. Maybe in Mexico. <laughs> Not here. Yeah, maybe in Guatemala. Mm. Anyway, here's some fake news that I saw on the, on the internet. It says, World War III. Russian military uh, 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 MP boasts terrifying new defense system that can shut down the whole planet. Yeah, that story too. So listen to me. If that were true, mm -hmm. it would have happened already, mm -hmm. okay? Because this nationalist lawmaker, Vladimir Zirinovsky, said Russia now possesses, or was preparing to possess, S, I should say S, I keep saying in the wrong language, S-600 and S-700 missile defense systems that he said has set alarm bells ringing in Washington. He said... The Americans are scared in general. They're scared that the world's best air defense system is Russia's S-300, which was bombed to smithereens by the Israelis. And he also says the S-300 has interested them. They have paid no attention whatsoever to some S-300, but now they're scared because Israel, the United States, and close ally is scared. The S-300s are nearby. Every jet, not just Israeli, every military jet may be destroyed. Yeah, okay, so we're waiting. Go ahead, press the button, because it's not happening. By the way, this is a fake news. Israel and Russia have a very close military alliance. They're not going to destroy anybody's jets. And Russia is not an enemy. It is an ally. And I would suggest that people watch the video that I posted not long ago, about from Q, that shows how Russia and, and Putin are being uh, demonized by the global media because they're in trouble. Because who's in trouble? The uh, Illuminati. Oh. The global media. Yeah. Now, voting. You know, the elections are coming up in November. But according to a new study of the United States Census data, this is really actually funny, America has more registered voters than actual live people. I saw that. And it's a troubling fact that puts our, the country in, in peril. And they said, according to the National Review's DeRoy Murdoch, I never heard of this, have you? That there are 3.5 million more people registered than there are adult Americans. <laughs> Maybe that's a fake story. <laughs> I, no, I've heard this for years. Yeah. Yeah, and they said that this inaccuracy is an invitation to voter fraud. Hello, the the machines are already even plugged in. There are 3.552 million people called ghost voters. They don't exist. California, for existence, for instance, has 11 counties with more registered voters than actual voters. How do they know? And those counties voted for Hillary Clinton. Oh, I wonder who set that up. Los Angeles County, with more than 10 million people, is the most populous county and had 12% more registered voters than live Ooh. ones. How do, how do they know that? I'm, I've heard this before. Yeah, but how do they know that? That means there's over 800,000 ghost voters. It means, and, and I've heard this for years, that there are people registered who are dead. Oh, those I've heard. Those I've heard dogs stories. that are registered. Yes, I've heard those. That's and funny. illegal aliens and fictitious people mm -hmm. are registered and vote. And that's why Hillary, she says, I won the popular vote. Yeah, of people that don't exist or who are dead. Now to something that used to be one of your people, but it's not. Hmm. Elizabeth Warren. She was one of my people? Well, she claimed to be herself as a Native American. Mm -hmm. And she pointed to an unsubstantiated claim on an 1894 Oklahoma Territory marriage license application by her great-great-grand-uncle, William J. Crawford, that his mother, O.C. Sarah Smith Crawford, Mrs. War War Ms. Warren's great-great-great grandmother was a Cherokee. But apparently 
it's her family laws of fiction because O.C. Sarah Smith Crawford had no Cherokee heritage and was listed as white on the census of 1860 and was most likely half Swedish and half English, Scottish, or German or some combination. So Warren has no Cherokee blood. And according to the Cherokee genealogist that traced Elizabeth Warren's heritage, she said she doesn't have a single Cherokee ancestor. She's blonde hair and blue eyed. Well, sometimes things happen. Anyway, Warren was listed, this is funny, in 1993 at the Harvard Student Journal, she was listed as a woman of color. She's blonde and blue eyed. Listen woman to me. of color. White people have color. Even I have color, color but just, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we're all, we all have a color. And it's, it's said that, uh, you know, her, her ancestor was white. She is a fraud, and she will never win an election. And you, Janet, are more Cherokee and black than she is. Well, no, I have real Cherokee and black ancestors. Yes, I know. You are a woman of color. I oh. can see that there's, there's a black spot, there's a red spot. Yeah, anyway. yeah, and you have color, too. Everybody has a color. Well, my ancestors... Unless you're transparent. I have ancestors who were Mongolian. There you go. So, see, that's why I like but Asian I, food. Yeah, but I'm just telling you that everybody has a color. I don't care if you're white, black, my point brown, being, My point being red. that you are more Cherokee than she is. Yes, I know. I, the funniest thing was President Trump said that he's more, <laughs> he's more Cherokee than she, and he has zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice, no, correct. It's hilarious. Anyway, let's go to another side of the world. Australia is considering recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moving its embassy there from Tel Aviv, according to his Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. And I mentioned this last week, why are they doing this? Anyway, Israel regards Jerusalem as its eternal and undivided capital, while the Palestinians claim East Jerusalem, which has been occupied by Israel in the 1967 Middle East War as the capital of their future state. However, Israel's sovereignty over Jerusalem has never been recognized internationally, and according to 1993 Israeli-Palestinian peace accords, the final status of Jerusalem is meant to be discussed in future peace talks. Now, here's another thing that's interesting. In December 2017, UN member states voted decisively at the General Assembly in favor of a resolution effectively declaring the U.S. recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital to be null and void and demanding it be canceled. And we demand you cancel it. <laughs> here's a, here's, a, here's a, a, a big news flash, which I've mentioned many times before. Jerusalem has been the capital of Israel for three thousand years. There's no other country on earth that's had a capital for that long. And here's something that's going to aggravate people. Jerusalem, so that really doesn't matter if they recognize it or not. It you know, just is. It's like Canada saying, if we don't recognize Washington, D.C., it shall be Topeka. You know, seriously. Canada's another, we're going to get to Canada. First of all, here's another news flash which I discussed in September mm -hmm. class. Jerusalem has never been mentioned in the Quran ever. What does that have to do with anything? Because they want it to be their capital, but it has nothing to do with Islam. Islam wants Jerusalem as its well, capital? The Arabs, Palestinians, which never existed before 1967. I'm not going to get into that now. Let's get into another funny topic. The UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. You like that topic. Yeah. They have a special report on global warming of one and a half degrees Celsius. And they say they call for societal changes that are unprecedented in terms of scale. They should look out the window right now at the snow and the ice coming down. And they want uh, in order to limit future global warming to below one and a half degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. It's like Here's, here, but here's why. Now you're going to get the reason why. They want the world to abandon its use of coal for electricity, its use of solar uh, and, and wind power, and they said that they want to include a carbon tax as high as 
27,000 US dollars per ton by the year 2100. Who's going to pay that? Not me. I'll be dead by then. You will? Yeah, I'll be 144. How old? You'll be like the same age. Yeah, be yeah. the same age. Well, we'll be very old, but we'll maybe. Yeah, we'll still be. Now, for Americans, that's the same as $240 per gallon tax on gasoline in the year 2100. And if it's adopted, then in 2030, the carbon tax would be as high as 5,500 US dollars or $49 per gallon on gas tax. Seriously? But if inflation, they will be if inflation keeps war. going up. So listen, this is a giant scam that President Trump will remove, so don't worry about it. I wasn't worried. I'm not, I'm not worried. I wasn't now, worried. You know what's coming up at the end of this month? The worst, my, the, the holiday I hate the most, mm -hmm. Halloween. And that's October 31st. And some of the most horrifying acts imaginable are carried out, out on that day. Although Halloween is supposedly an innocent holiday in America that's all about dressing up and eating candy and having fun. Is that what you do? I don't. We know. I think our readers know. We kind of that. throw things at the little girls and boys that come. Yeah. And we don't participate. Yeah, we don't participate. According to the National Retail Federation, 70% of all Americans celebrate Halloween. And guess this. They spend nine billion dollars on that holiday. Oh, I know it's a lot. If they gave me 10% of that, you mm -hmm. 1%, I'd be very happy me too. and they would get something good out of it. Yeah. Halloween traditions have their roots in a bloody ancient pagan festival known as Samhain. The origins of Halloween are Celtic in tradition and have to do with observing the end of summer sacrifices to the gods in Druidic tradition. In what is now Britain and France, it was the beginning of the Celtic year, and they believed Samhain, the Lord of Death, sent evil spirits abroad to attack humans who could escape only by assuming disguises and looking like evil spirits themselves. That's why people dress up in those terrible mm -hmm. Halloween costumes, which they have no idea why. And the rituals would involve human blood. The Druids worshipped the sun god called Baal or Bel, or Krum, and on October 31st they believed that he died and went into the kingdom of the dead, which was called Unwin, if I pronounced that correctly. And the purpose of Samhain was to ensure his return, even witches admit this involved human sacrifice. And according to an article in the UK Sun, which we can't really trust them too much, Animals and humans were both often thrown into huge fire pits as offerings. All kinds of religions used to do that. So Halloween should be banned, in my opinion. It should be banned. Only the United States celebrates it like they do. Other countries, it's not such a big deal. So kudos to the other countries. Here's information. What the ice is really coming down out there. Here's a popular corporate jargon as they say for the dumb down consumption you know how you buy cans of food or packages and it has mm -hmm. like a message on it does it yeah so for example number one mm -hmm. this package says generally recognized as safe mm -hmm. that is the fda stamp approval that means the ingredient is highly dangerous to human health but the fda refuses to run any test on it number two safe and effective you've seen that yeah, but I wouldn't buy anything without on it. Yeah, okay, it's been never, that means it's never been proven in a clinical trial to work and could have adverse events and side effects of the whatever's in there. Number three, ask your doctor if it's right for you. I see that mm -hmm. on commercials all the time. That means uh, to cancel out, that's meant to cancel out any thoughts that are still lingering in your mind about if it's okay and uh, usually the side effects may include internal bleeding, loss of vision, and suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Not lovely. Like Number four, sustainable and improves yield. This is for agricultural people. Uh, and this means that the biotechnology corporations and the chemical industrial agricultural complex um, are using, means the exact opposite, and the yield claim is completely false. Number five, 
as a preservative or for added freshness. This means cancer-causing chemicals and dementia-inducing GMOs have been added to the beverages, and that would be sodium benzoate and canola oil, etc. Number six, that this statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. And you see that on uh, usually organic foods and supplements mm -hmm. and so on. And that means that uh, it will never be allowed to be proven as, as helpful as stated on the label because that would dip into the big pharma, pharma's prescription drug profits. And finally, uh, use as directed or safe only when taken as directed. That means uh, most pharma drugs are not safe at all to begin with. And more than 100,000 Americans die every year from prescription drugs that are taken as directed. So do not use these things. Use indigenous or monastic medical treatment, alternative therapies, and you'll find that on expansions.com. Now my final story is about the weather, which we're talking about because we could hear it hitting the windows. And did you know that now here in, the, in, in October, middle of October, uh, the snow cover is the most it's been in, in 13 years. Is that magic number 13? It's the largest snow cover extent from in October in more than a decade. That means 3 million square miles of North America, here in the United States especially, has a snow cover. And that is the largest it's been since 2005. But in some areas, it is more than it has been since the 1800s. That sounds like global warming to me, doesn't it? I guess so. Well, I've got to sort through my news because you had some of mine. So I... Mine was more interesting than yours. Yeah, I had about the caravan people. Well, maybe you have some more. All right, and I also I wanted to up now. I think it's about the same. Not too much other than Trump had called, said that the Democrats were responsible, which is what you kind of said. And um, then I also wanted to mention that Khashoggi, Jamal Khashoggi, that you had talked about last week, mm -hmm. that one of the people who was suspected in his murder was mysteriously killed in a car Isn't crash. That interesting. And as a result of this Khashoggi incident, this there's a um, conference going on, or supposed to happen, in the Middle East called Davos of the Middle East, which is Saudi Arabia's future investment initiative. And a lot of high-profile business people canceled because of this Khashoggi yeah. incident. So Khashoggi that, worked for the CIA. He was not a good person. The head of the World Bank, Viacom CEO, Uber CEO, AOL founder, J.P. Morgan CEO, Ford All Chair, the people who work for Khashoggi. They all pulled out. Billionaire Richard Branson yeah. and so oh, on. Oh, yeah, so on. he's a big one, right? Yes. I trust what he says. But they all get, are pulling out of what's, because of whatever is happening over that there. That means those companies are up the behind of the Illuminati. Yeah, and then I also had a Russia story about uh, President Putin saying, uh, talking about what he sees as the end of the U.S. world dominance due to growing mistakes. And again, he mentioned the Khashoggi incident and he said that the U.S. has responsibility because uh, Jamal Khashoggi was a Saudi journalist who was living in the U.S. And regarding the U.S., he said that empires often think they can make some little mistakes because they're so powerful, but when the number of these mistakes keep growing, it reaches a level they cannot sustain. So then he went on to say this is the result of the monopoly from a unipolar world. Luckily, this monopoly is disappearing, and it's almost done. We'll see. And then he mentioned, which I don't know if this is the same thing you had talked about, but Russia's hypersonic we weapon mm -hmm, system. Mm -hmm. He said this system would allow missile speeds of at least five times the speed of sound, mm. or about one mile per second. Wow. He said the U.S. is incapable of defending itself against such a system, but that Russia's weapons would only be used to retaliate, and we have no concept of a preemptive strike. Good for him. And he went on to say that Trump is continuing to work to improve ties with Russia. And so, so it is, because Russia is our friend. Yeah. And then uh, on to President Emmanuel Macron oh, of France. Oh, yeah, the pedophile. Uh, the, the wife the is the pedophile. To the pedophile. Yeah. Anyway, according to this news story, there's a new book out by um, Mimi Marchand, who was an advisor to the Macron family. Miss mm. Marchand is 71 years old. Uh -huh. So apparently it's like a tell-all book on the yeah, Macrons. go on. And she claims that Brigitte Mar Macron mm -hmm. has urged her husband, the boy toy, 
his inner circle to tell him the truth more often because he's too arrogant and too snappy. Well, that's the damn truth. And she claims she's fed up with his high-handed manner. She should smack him around. And apparently this new book reveals that there was a secret gay relationship that her husband was involved in. Mm-hmm. Macron. Macron. With? That, well, it's a secret. No one knows. Oh. So they're trying to find out, or people are trying to expose it, but of course, you know. Uh -huh. Well, he was a naughty boy then. And apparently his wife, who's 25 years older than her husband, is sick of the press focusing on her age. <laughs> And apparently social media posts mm -hmm. wrongly claim she lied about her date of birth. So does that she's mean like she's older? A, maybe. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm wondering. And then it goes on to say that Macron himself is having some political issues. Yeah, a lot. And that two of his ministers resigned. Uh -huh. And one of the ministers claimed uh -huh. that his president lacked humility. No, he lacks brains. Well, anyway, so that was France. And then, interestingly, you brought up the number 13 because also... Uh, I found an article that say that tornadoes are shifting farther east in the U.S. Good, we, get them out of here. We live in what's called Tornado Alley yeah, well, in the get Central them out. Plains. Go, go to New York. But there have been now 13 states identified as part of Dixie Alley. Dixie Alley? Dixie Alley. Mm. We're Tornado that Alley. So now it's Dixie Alley. Mm -hmm. Apparently, these 13 states are Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, Louisiana, Alabama, Kentucky, Missouri. Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Iowa, and guess what parts of Ohio and Michigan. So we're in both of them. Well, that's not right. So I don't know. We should go down to Mississippi. That They're kind of dopey anyway. Yeah. And the other thing I just want to mention, that this past week Canada um, uh, uh, approved legal sale of mm -hmm. marijuana. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're not stupid enough. Now they need to be even more stupid. Okay. Really? Yeah. Well, that's the end of Canada. Yeah. Well, anyway, well, Trump was working on, you know, lining all the... Trudeau is history. Out the door. Trust God on that. Now, I want to remind you that in November, just a couple weeks away, not only do we have somebody's birthday around the corner. Ooh, I, I forgot. I had forgotten. Yes, but we also have our next series of self-healing webinars coming up called Affirming You. And I think this week we are working on finances and organization. We are. We are and mm. abandonment and a lot of other Ooh. things. So we have new things coming up depending upon how the group goes. Is the subject that we choose from this book, which is very fascinating. Okay. And I want to remind you also that you need to control your own mind before somebody controls it for you. So Hyperspace Helper. True Reality of Sexuality, 13 Cubed, all can fit in And I'm book. about to write a sequel to that one. Well, you may be about to write it, but it's going to be a few months before it is in the public. No, so that's good. I prefer not to tell them until I we tell actually have I know you do, but you tell them too much. <gasps> then we have your story about how you talk too much, right? The Alien Connection, Blue Blood, True World History, great books, all go in one envelope. More health and healing books. Stuart says, I just put that out there because he really likes that one. Uh, and then we have, oh, look at that. This is the one Plus. that was just um, featured on this the video. Okay. Hyperspace Plus. And then Healing Archetypes and Symbols, very popular. We have our children's series, the Little Fluffs, Protection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Archetypes, Chakras, and Auras. And of course, they're all in color, which are nice. And as I, I explained to you, if you English is your second language, you have a lot of people wanting us to do things in other languages. Ha! So, there you go. White Owl Legends, Decoding Your Life, this one particularly. Oh, you got like every book we ever did. Well, no, not really. We have lots of books. We have lots of books that aren't here. Some that are only online, some mm -hmm. that are on Kindle, some that are e-books. Some have, are in hyperspace yeah. and interdimensional. So we always have a lot of them. So please mm -hmm. like, comment, share our Facebook pages. If you do that on our Facebook page, you get an 8% off on any they do. purchase. Yes. Wow. And like, comment, and share on our YouTube videos. Get mm. the word out about a hyperspace oversoul work. Get a membership on our site, less than a dollar a day. And That's what I get. The full membership for one year, and then it's about 53 cents a day mm -hmm. to get a Q&A blog, my monthly study blog, my affirmations, your whatever it is that you do on there. I don't do anything. So that's what you get. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Until next time. Bye. Bye.